Good morning, friends. Today is Wednesday, so it's time for another super fun spark story, and I have one for us today. This story is called Hedgy Blastoff, and it is written by a lady um, called, named uh, Jan Brett. Now, Jan Brett is an author, but she's also an illustrator. So that means she wrote the story and she illustrated all the pictures. Now, this is a really good story, but the most interesting thing I think about Jan Brett's stories are the pictures. They're very detailed. So friends, scoot up close to your computer screen today so that you can see these pictures because they're really super fun. Okay, so our story today is about a little hedgehog. Now let's talk for just a minute about hedgehogs because we don't have hedgehogs in the United States. Um, they're like over in Europe and I think there are hedgehogs in New Zealand. I think I read that. I could be wrong. Maybe it was Australia. Oh well. Anyway, the point is we don't have them in the United States. So we're not kind of used to seeing these little creatures, but they are super cute. A hedgehog would fit like in the palm of your hand, just like right here. And what's really important for our story for today is that hedgehogs have these little spiky things. So they're kind of like a porcupine, only their spikes aren't as sharp and they're much smaller. So that'll be important for our story. So remember that. Okay, so friends, we have been going um, all over the world reading stories, but today, Hedgy is taking us to outer space. So, what does Bud Light ear say? To infinity and beyond. So that's where we're going today with our story. So, let's get started. My name is Hedgy. I want to be an astronaut. I work at Star Lab on the cleanup crew. I've never flown in a spaceship, but I take care of the Zepidoppler rocket for the professor, the smartest scientist on Earth. He's in charge of outer space. Wow, that's a big job. Today, when I got to work, the professor looked worried. Hedgy, he said, we have a problem. Big Sparkler is only sending up weak bursts of sparkles. If that stops altogether, there will be no more big sparkler and no more flowers. Flowers? In space? Well, friends, we read stories for lots of different reasons. Last week, we read a true story that took us to a real place, and we talked about a real lady. Today, Hedgie's story is taking us to a, a fictional place, a make-believe place, and he is a make-believe character. So friends, put on your imaginations and hang with me because all of this will make more sense as we move through the story. Big Sparkler is on the tiny planet of Mycop. Alien tourists fly over it to watch it erupt and to take pictures of the strange flowers that depend on the sparkles for food. This is an emergency, Hedgie. Call the scientists to the lab. Now, I told you these illustrations were good. Look closely, friends. Those scientists are dogs. <laughs> I love that, because I love dogs. Okay, the scientist came in and the professor explained the problem. Big Sparkler is failing, he told them. We need to go to my cop and find out what's wrong. I'd fly there in that Zeppa Doppler, but it is too big to land on tiny my cop. We need to build a rescue robot and a small rocket to go there. The scientists looked at the drawings on the blackboard and went to work. I tried to help, said Hedgy. Okay, do y'all see that little drawing on the, on the blackboard? He looks a lot, the little robot looks a lot like Hedgy to me. Hmm, I wonder where this story is going. Soon, everything was ready for the launch. Reporters came to hear about the mission. The professor explained, Big Sparkler isn't working properly. First, let me show you how it is supposed to work. So he put a cork in a bottle of fizzy water. Pretend that this is Big Sparkler, he said. He shook and shook and shook the bottle until the cork flew out and water soaked the reporters. But now, Big Sparkler is sending up fewer and fewer sparkles. We think it may stop altogether, the professor said. How can we find out what's going on, a reporter asked. Meet Rescue Robot, the professor answered. 
He threw open the hatch to the rocket. The pilot seat was empty. We looked around the lab. No robot. Then I opened the door to the cleanup crew closet. There he was. In sleeper mode, spikes jammed fast. Rescue robot had probed too soon, gotten stuck, and crashed. Oh no! What are they going to do? The reporter looked at the professor. The professor looked at me, Hedgie, and at the robot, the rescue robot. Then he whispered in my ear, Hedgie, you are the only one who can fit in the rocket. How would you like to go to outer space? I know, I would be so excited if I were him. I nodded my head, yes, Hedgie said. The professor turned to the reporters. A little change in plans, he told them. Meet Rescue Hedgie. No program necessary. The professor looked at me. Come back and tell us what you find, Hedgie, and we will fix the problem. Okay. Zoom! Off Hedgie went. The tiny planet Mycop got larger and larger before my eyes. Well, that's a cool illustration. The engine soared as the rocket settled onto my cop's surface. I climbed out of the hatch. Big sparklers crater was in front of me. The flower circling it had turned into little gray puffballs. Oh no. Suddenly, I was startled by a low flying saucer. It buzzed down just as big sparklers struggled to erupt. A tiny stream of glittering sparkles sifted through the air and dusted the passing ship. The tourists inside shrieked and threw things out of their portholes down into the crater. Hmm. I wonder if that might be part of the problem. Clink, clink, clunk. More squeals. Then I saw what was falling into the crater. Coins. I walked over and looked. That's what's wrong. Too many coins from all those galaxies uh, where they're flying around Big Sparkler. It needed to be cleaned out. I wanted to fix Big Sparkler for the professor before going home, but how could I drag all of those years of coins out of the crater? It was impossible for one small hedgehog. Or was it? Then I remember the bottle of fizzy water and the cork. What if I became the cork for Big Sparkler? One little hedgehog might just be perfect for the job. I took a big jump before I was too scared. I landed in the opening and puffed up my prickles to stop it up completely. So that's where these little things come in, right here. He's, he's stopping up the hole with his little prickles. I felt Big Sparkler pushing against me. The more it pushed, the tighter I held on. Hold fast, hold fast, hold fast. Kaboom! Oh wow, I hope y'all can see this. Big Sparkler erupted with a tremendous roar and I flew up. Look, there's Hedgie way up there. and landed in a soft pile of sparkles. Giant flowers came alive right before my eyes. Those are very pretty, aren't they? I raced back to the rocket and took off for home. I was making a victory orbit around my cup when I saw the alien tourists. They were squealing with joy. Instead of throwing good luck coins into Big Sparkler, they were trying to catch them flying through space. I hope it takes them years uh, to collect all of those coins because friends, if they're collecting coins, then they're not dropping them in the hole and stopping up Big Sparkler. Hmm. Back at Star Lab, I was in for another surprise. I stood beside the professor as he said a few words to the reporters. Please meet our first hedgehog astronaut, the scientist at Star Lab proudly present Hedgie with the official astronaut star for his courage and cool thinking. I was an astronaut. The professor went on, 
Star Lab is grateful to everyone who worked to save my cop and Big Sparkler. From astronaut first class Hedgie to our new high tech cleanup crew. Three cheers for Hedgie! Hooray! Now, do y'all notice who the cleanup crew is? It's the, it's the robot that was supposed to go to space instead of Hedgie. I'm glad Hedgie got to go. Well, friends, I hope you enjoyed that story. Um, look back over those illustrations. They are super fun, and the details that you find in those pictures are just outrageous and will make you laugh. So, I hope everybody has a wonderful Wednesday. As a matter of fact, I hope you have a wonderful whole week, and see me back here next week for another Spark Story. Who knows where we're going to go then? Love y'all, friends. Bye.